Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Deep Understanding of Research Papers. Today, I am going to explain uh, a paper called RAWnet, Advanced End-to-End -end Deep Neural Network Using Raw Waveforms for Text Independent Speaker Verification. And uh, this paper was uh, published in 2019. And uh, these are the authors, and uh, the authors are from University of Seoul uh, in Korea. So, uh, the tutorial, we are going to cover the introduction. Uh, then we will see the RAWnet uh, architecture and the idea of uh, the RAWnet uh, this paper and uh, then we will see something called DNN based backend classification and uh, uh, we will see the experiments and results and finally I will show you uh, the code I have written for this uh, for this uh, paper's model architecture. So, uh, so what are raw, uh, raw waveform based models? So basically this raw net is basically named after uh, uh, the way uh, people, uh, people process the raw waveforms in neural networks basically. So uh, usually what happens in speech, we, if you look at the raw audio, it will be a, a one dimensional signal. Uh, and uh, this is basically, you can think of it as a array of numbers, right? So a sequence of numbers and they are like 1D. And uh, you can, uh, usually what happens in speech is uh, most of the time people just extract features for every uh, 25 millisecond uh, or every 10 millisecond with 25 millisecond window. Uh, and there was those vectors, those features could be like MFCC features or even spectrogram features, sometimes mil, uh, mil filter bank energy, so on, right? So that way you can get sequence of vectors and that looks like a matrix and you can ap apply some sort of a CNN on top of it or some, some something like LSTMs uh, on this sequence of features. But uh, this is this feature extraction part is called front-end processing. So this front-end processing basically involves uh, using some sort of uh, classical feature extraction process or feature extraction algorithm which was published by uh, people uh, to extract these vectors. But can we directly use this raw audio, this is a sequence of numbers, into neural network? One question arises is this sequence uh, or these signals are very high dimension. Like for example, if you look at one second worth of audio data, so the audio data uh, in one second will be around 16,000 samples. So basically if you are looking at uh, let's say three second, processing three second audio, you will end up in let's say uh, three times 16,000 samples. Right, these are like very uh, long string, right? Very, very huge uh, uh, sequence, and uh, we can't go, uh, we can't process sample by samples in case of using recurrent neural network because uh, uh, they won't work because like the the sequence is very, very long. So what can we do? Uh, so so we can uh, use something called uh, something like uh, CNNs, one D CNNs, basically, one dimensional CNNs, to extract the features. Uh, directly from this raw audio. So basically, let's say I have a sequence of numbers, I can use a filter of dimension 1D. So if you do signal processing, if you, if you have done some signal processing or digital signal processing course, you will know uh, if you have a sequence H of N, which is basically a filter, right? And uh, if you have a signal X of N, which is basically your input, these are 1D signals. And you can use H of N and X of N and operate something called convolution, right? So it's the same way, so you can use this 1D convolution to extract these features. And we'll understand how that is done. And uh, these are like the recent trends. Uh, many people have worked on it. And uh, uh, recently I published around uh, three papers just based on this raw audio waveform based uh, methods because these are kind of catching up these days uh, because you have very good GPUs to process and the convolution, your 1D convolution neural networks are working very well. And in fact, uh, my uh, rec uh, recent 2020 uh, ICAS paper was S almost similar to the same uh, idea of this paper uses a resonate along with uh, the uh, raw waveform processing front end. So, uh, so in that way, so a lot of people are uh, uh, trying to use this raw waveform based methods, and uh, uh, people are catching up on this. And uh, I think in the future, many people will uh, start using just raw audio waveform based methods instead of going for any uh, any uh, uh, MFCC based feature extraction. So uh, once you, uh, so this raw net basically uses this raw audio based, uh, based uh, input. So that's why they call it raw net. And the neural network they use is uh, one dimensional uh, ResNet, ResNet uh, residual neural network. Uh, many people may be knowing about ResNet. 
and uh, we'll understand all the architecture details and so on and implementation is very easy actually so i'll show you the implementation so um, so that way we have this x vector and i vector these are like the previous uh, speaker identification systems which uh, many people have used and the to even today they are like very famous and uh, uh, those those use their own uh, neural networks i mean not i vector x vector uses its own tdna architecture but this is also something like that and uh, so on the voxelab data set these people are showing they have they get a, a state of the art performance without data augmentation uh, we'll see those numbers in the coming slides and uh, uh, they say uh, they their proposed approach is almost compatible comparable with the state of that x vector system uh, that adopts the data augmentation so we'll see all those numbers in the coming slides so what is this raw net we will understand this raw net architecture in two uh, uh, two parts so one is we first we'll understand what is the market model architecture like what is this uh, neural network they are using and then we'll see uh, some objective functions which they are using to enhance the uh, the features in the sense they are enhancing the performance of the system so this model architecture looks like this so basically the input is basically a 1d signal uh, and it has around uh, 59,000 uh, samples, 59 approximately. Uh, I don't really know why they went with 59,000 because they are processing around 3.6 second of audio. They could have easily gone to four or three, three seconds. I don't, I don't know the reason, uh, but anyway, so uh, this is the input size. So basically input is basically one cross uh, 59,000 samples, right? 59, 49,000 samples without batch so this is the input uh, data for size so uh, what they do is they use uh, in initial convolution layer basically so the initial convolution layer is simple uh, convolution 1d convolution with the uh, three filter uh, three uh, one cross three filter size and uh, stride of three and 128 uh, features uh, 128 uh, feature maps or 128 filters so so and it has a batch normalization layer and a leaky relu layer uh, and uh, so the output of this will be basically uh, 19,683 cross uh, 128. So this is basically once you do convolution on 1D uh, and you are doing striding of 3, so it gets divided by 3 in size. And since your output is 128 filters, uh, you have 128 dimension uh, uh, in the in the, the other dimension, right? So this is uh, very simple. So uh, I'll show you the code actually, so you'll understand it very easy. So that the code implementation I'll show you. So th that way we'll get a easy idea. But the number wise, I think this is the this is the first layer. And after that, you have res, res block, uh, which is basically operates with filter size of 128, or uh, not filter size. Sorry, number of filters as 128, uh, and they are, they are like two of them. And uh, this is the output. And uh, the other res block, like I'm calling it as res block three, is the res block, res, res block one and res block two. One has uh, uh, 128 feature maps uh, in every residual block, and uh, the res block two has 256 feature maps um, in a, every res block, and there are four of them. So the output of this, uh, after max pooling, goes to uh, GRU. Basically, GRU is the LSTM or RNN record neural network and after this they do uh, average pooling they are not showing it here so I just assumed uh, uh, before I read, I read the paper I just assumed some sort of they are taking the last uh, vector last uh, time steps vector and they are feeding it to FC but this is basically they have the average pooling layer here and the output of it uh, will go to fully connect fully connected layer with uh, 128 uh, neurons and those can be taken as the speaker embeddings that is the output and then the output uh, the speaker embeddings will go to a fully connected layer which is the softmax layer uh, which predicts the speaker class i hope you guys understood uh, so maybe it looks a little bit complicated but uh, code wise uh, you will understand very easily i'll come to that and uh, objective functions they are not simply using the cross center objective uh, objective function like we usually do uh, when you have any classification uh, classification uh, task but here they are using some feature enhancement uh, losses as well so the so the they are using three different types of loss so cross entropy loss is the standard loss used for classification which is like the must and uh, necessary thing and uh, to learn the discriminative features of the speakers basically and you have something called center loss and speaker bias loss so what is this center loss so the center loss is this this loss here 
so this is basically center loss basically uh, you, you can think of the think of this problem as some sort of a clustering problem let's say you have speakers and uh, each speaker has the speaker embeddings here right uh, so basically each each cluster here is a speaker uh, each one one speaker speaker one speaker two and uh, speaker three right and this speaker has uh, many utterances and uh, out of those utterances i'm extracting a lot of speaker embeddings and the center loss says i want to minimize this intra cluster variance so the intra cluster variance means i want to pull all these vectors I'm showing in 2D, but they are like 120 dimension, but I want to pull all these vectors so that this cluster becomes very tight, right? Means the variance in this cluster is very slow, very low. And I want to minimize cluster, uh, the intra class variance of this speaker as well. So that way, so once the training is done, this, these uh, clusters will become very tight, right? That means we are reducing the variance. This is, this is the loss, right? This is the center loss. And that's what it says here. Like XI is basically the speaker I, uh, I uh, speakers, uh, embedding and CY is the centroid of that the speaker and you want to minimize the distance right and the second loss we are having is uh, this uh, speaker bias loss so basically this says I want to maximize the intra class variance of these uh, speakers different speakers basically so what does it mean I want to uh, pull uh, or I want to uh, push these two clusters much far or far away so that there is no misclassification, right? So I have these two these two clusters, right? I want to just uh, push this cluster so away from too away from uh, too far from this cluster, so that there is no misclassification. So basically, this is like sort of a uh, uh, you can think of it as some sort of a doing uh, like when you do in PCA, right? So you want to minimize the intra-class variance and maximize the inter-class uh, variance, right? So a similar way. So you you are doing the same thing here, like using cosine similarity. So that is the speaker bias loss and the, as you know cross center plus is basically uh, is a prediction of the speaker label given the audio data and they are just adding all these losses together right so adding all the losses together uh, they are able to do uh, they are able to cr generate a very highly discriminative uh, speaker embeddings which are much useful for uh, classification right so later so this, this is the idea of this uh, the objective functions they are using and coming to backend uh, dnn backend uh, classification dnn based backend classification so this is basically when you are doing uh, let's say speaker verification you have a uh, out speakers uh, new speakers and those speakers have their own utterances and uh, you don't want to train the neural network again by adding this data you can simply extract these embeddings from the already trained uh, model and they can directly use those embeddings to compare whether uh, 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 a uh, query utterance is similar to uh, like the claimed speaker or any, anything so it's a simple classical speaker verification problem right so you can do it in many ways so basically let's say you have a speaker who let's say i say let's say uh, i have trained in neural network and tomorrow let's say the obama comes and asks me uh, can you classify my voice or can you verify my voice so what i will do is i'll ask him okay give me some uh, 10 audio samples of yours so you will speak something and i'll record uh, 10 audio files uh, from him uh, let's say three three second or five five second once and i extract these embeddings for all the audios right and uh, this uh, like all these 10 vectors i can simply average them and get a single uh, vector which is basically the speaker uh, identity or sometimes also called a fingerprint speaker fingerprint right now uh, again tomorrow one says okay uh, i want to log into my system um, i just speaks to my sister uh, system which i have created for him so he says uh, something and i get a new vector uh, from the pre-trained model and i just have to compare whether the utterance spoken by obama is similar to the data which he gave uh, to me yesterday so basically it's comparison so what can i do is simply i can go and do a cosine similarity of this vector and this vector and if obama actually speaks i mean if he claims he is speaking then uh, i should get very low cosine similarity score right and then i can uh, okay say okay uh, this is the obama this is uh, obama speaking in front of the camera or in front of the mic in the door so i can open the door so this is the speaker verification problem right so cosine similarity is one thing but many people have proposed many other things like pldas and there are many other backends people have created over the years and uh, one of the other uh, recent one is also called b vector so b vector is basically takes these two vector the 
query vector and the speaker audio print uh, the speaker finger uh, fingerprint and does three different operation multi element wise so one is called uh, one is called uh, addition addition basically they try he, he tries to add these two vectors together and the uh, second one is uh, uh, i think uh, i think multiplication uh, uh, multiplication is one more and uh, subtraction maybe so i don't remember but it does three different uh, binary operations Elim element wise basically so once it does it gets uh, you get uh, three different vector and uh, you just concatenate them right that is your uh, uh, b that's the b vector and recently we some person came up with something called rb vector some some representation uh, based vector so you can go and read about those uh, in the the like in the uh, literature survey they have done these are like different different approaches so um, maybe if, some, if i get some time i'll also explain this in some future videos uh, and this paper they say specifically say they they just uh, get got rid of this addition and other operations they just used only this multiply element wise multiplication operation and they were able to get better accuracy so that is the idea of uh, the backended uh, the dnn based backend uh, models and uh, now let's look into some experimentations so, so in the experiment they are using this walk celeb one data uh, which has around 330 hours of audio recordings and they have 1251 speakers uh, they are all like audios are all text independent means they are not scripted they are just speaking randomly and uh, they the official data says it seems they have uh, 1211 uh, speakers in the evaluation uh, 1211 speakers in the training and 40 in the evaluation so uh, and uh, in the training the arch for the architecture they are using mini batch uh, uh, mini batch uh, i don't know i forgot the mini batch size but uh, the each each mini batch has mini batch has uh, uh, audio file of audio uh, segments of 59000 samples and maybe there are 64 mini batch and so on like depends on the on your gpu configurations and so on and uh, they're using l2 normalization uh, weight factor of this much they're using ams grad for optimizer with learning rate of 0.001 and uh, decay parameter is this much and center for less center loss they are using lambda of 10 power minus 3. so these are some architectural configurations so you can can go and uh, read the paper in detail if you want to specifically use this paper for your applications or anything right so let's see the results so in the results um, like if they just use the baseline model without any enhancement losses uh, just the softmax loss uh, they get a, a year of 8.7 and if they use intermediate uh, uh, in uh, the losses like intermediate basically the uh, so uh, this loss is this 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 one but the enhancement they are using is uh, the the different ones so basically uh, softmax plus the enhancement is basically the reconstruction kind of losses so the LDA is one uh, enhancement you can do on the embeddings DCAE is basically uh, auto encoder based uh, 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 the auto encoder based uh, reconstruction uh, based uh, uh, enhancement you can do basically you take the embedding and try to uh, reconstruct it so maybe I think that's the idea and uh, the, this is the ER you get and if you use all the the losses along with the enhancements you will get the best uh, ER uh, and uh, for the back end if you use I, uh, this is I vector like the old one the previous we get 13.8 which is very high and uh, I vector with uh, LDA back end uh, so LDA enhancement you get this much and if you use augmentation with X vector you get 11.3 and if you use uh, X vector without augmentation you get uh, sorry without augmentation is this and with augmentation you get 9.9 .9. And if you use raw net, you get like uh, very good, like like almost uh, uh, four four percent improvement in a year. Right. And uh, similarly, uh, comparison with various other backends, PLDA, as I said, the B vector, RB vector, and this uh, the whatever they proposed in this paper, the concatenation multiplication. So finally, this is the number like four point zero is like the best uh, best year. And comparison with many other previous approaches, they have done. Uh, there are many papers published in the speaker verification, speaker verification or speaker identification uh, problems like there are so many of them so as you can see uh, uh, this paper basically uses front end x vector and back end PLDA uh, so augmentation with augmentation you get the best uh, EER but this paper claims they don't do any augmentation maybe if they do augmentation they might get close to this but uh, 
you don't know uh, they have not done that so but it's a little bit closer to the state of the art uh, so yeah so that is the paper and now we will see the code uh, so sorry hold that one second So now we'll see the code of this uh, paper which I have implemented. So I implemented it today. It took around uh, an half an hour, I think 45 minutes to implement it. So hope you guys can see it. Uh, else I will just zoom in. So this is the code. I have put it in uh, GitHub repo. This is the repo name Ronet. And if you go to my repo Krishna D and and if you go to raw net you will find this code so basically i have written only the model architecture so if you want to write all the input wrappers and loss functions and all you have to write it on your own uh, i'll just show you uh, the implementation so basically they have the initial convolution layer as you can see i have also opened this architecture so that you can compare the code and the the model so basically they have this uh, initial convolution block and uh, the same thing is here so initial convolution uses 1d convolution with input channel 1 because uh, you are having one one dimensional signal and kernel size is three stride is three and uh, you're using batch norm and you're using leaky relo and the number of filters is 128 so same thing goes here and you can just run this chunk uh, run this uh, you can feed some input to this block and see the output and you will get exactly this output i already tested it but if you want you can do it so that is the next second block is this one this rest block and uh, this is the the so just to make a differentiation i have put this comment uh, along uh, ashes so that you can uh, read the code easily so res block one basically is uh, in this res block the first because they have two of them so i am using i am saying the first one basically you c this is basically creates a residual neural network yeah, and this residual neural network as uh, as a 1D convolution bottleneck, so, sorry, batch normalization and then leaky, leaky relu, same thing with the uh, 1D convolution and so on. So this is basically creates a residual block. You can read the code uh, later and uh, two of them are there. And uh, after that, we have a max pool layer here, as you can see here. So the max pool layer is there for every every residual block. So I'll show you the show, show you the input output uh, forward class uh, forward function. You will understand. And then uh, rest block this rest block has four uh, residual uh, residual uh, layers but each of them has uh, 256 feature maps so same way you have 200 same thing i am explaining here so you have residual block but you have 256 feature maps and at the end you have a max pooling layer of kernel size 3 and stride 3 so if you output the output uh, out, output the data of each block you will you will actually get this number so i have already tested it you can just go and do redo it again but so so this is the residual block so this third residual block so this is over now we have the gru so simple you have create a gru is calling nn.gru input size is same as the output size of the residual block uh, hidden size they are mentioning here is uh, 1024 as you can see here so that's why i'm saying 1024 dropout they are not clearly mentioned i'm just putting it 0 0.2 just for the Take. I mean, you can make it zero as well. And by directional, I'm making it false because uh, the output is 1024. That means they are not doing by directional. This is unidirectional. So I'm saying false means it takes unidirectional. And I always prefer to use batch first. Some people don't, but I prefer. And uh, the speaker embedding layer basically is a linear layer with <coughs> 128 uh, hidden hidden uh, hidden network hidden. Uh, uh, hidden uh, neurons and the same way here I am taking the output from GRU and I am passing it through the uh, linear layer to get the 28 dimensional feature features right and uh, output layer is basically a simple uh, fully connected and softmax layer you can make it usually people use the linear without they don't put softmax but it's it's fine it works right and uh, in the forward function it's just calling uh, the functions uh, so basically this is the first block first uh, initial convolution layer and output of it uh, goes to the rest block one and the output of the rest block one goes to rest block two and then you have gru and then you have um, the predictions basically the softmax or final layer output and you can send or return the predictions as well as the speaker embeddings uh, for your input 
so so i mean it's, it's a pretty straightforward thing and uh, here i am just making one mistake uh, it's not a mistake i just forgot so in the out output of gru so basically you have to pull it using average pulling uh, there is a standard nn dot average pulling on d command you can just use it but i thought uh, i didn't read the paper very carefully uh, to see the pulling layer i thought they are just taking the output of the gru last hidden activity and then feeding it as the out input to the input to this uh, speaker embedding layer but uh, that's what i did in the paper but i think i'll modify the code to add the average averaging uh, the the average pooling layer as well so this is the code i mean it's very simple so if you want to use it you can just directly do it this way so you import torch then you import the model uh, which is the ronet class and then you can this is the dummy input i have created so 64 is the batch size one basically says you have one uh, channel uh, in the input and the 59000 basically says i uh, have so many samples i have simply created some dummy input here and uh, then you feed that into a model sorry first you create the model and then you feed that mo input to the model and you can get the output this standard this, i mean if you just clone this repo uh, and assuming you have installed all the packages properly you can simply run this code and it works right so as simple as that so that's all for this tutorial thank you so much for watching this tutorial and uh, if, if you're not subscribed to my channel please subscribe and uh, please check out the code and uh, if possible you can use it for your applications as well uh, thank you